Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can alter the progression on your Valheim server while keeping everything fully vanilla. And this is going to be different than the other videos. Instead of showing you where to download something, I'll just show you how to make the script yourself. But before we get into that, let's make sure that you understand how progression works in Valheim in the first place. Luckily for us, Valheim's progression system is easy to understand. There are bosses, and those bosses drop items, and when you get that item, you can now make something new. For example, let's say you were to take down the Elder. Well then, the Elder is going to drop a progression item. In this case, the Elder's progression item is the Crypt Key, or the Swamp Key rather which allows you to get iron by opening the sunken crypts in the swamp. And this same pattern repeats itself throughout the rest of the game. You kill the boss, it gives you some kind of item that may or may not be very important for you in the next biome. And this is exactly what makes progression so simple to modify. All you have to do is find one situation where you can spawn one item, and that will totally change the player's progression. So, in this video, we'll focus on motor, because the artisan table is a really intense gatekeeping for a lot of builders, and it's something that some people might want to make available earlier on in the game. Before we head back down into the Black Forest to show the modified Elder, let's set the script up. To start your new script, I'll assume that you already have Expand World prefabs loaded onto the server, server launched for the first time, so that the files have been generated. We'll go into our Bepinex server, Bepinex, config, expand world. Now we can make a new file and we're going to call it expand prefabs alternative progression dot yaml. Then we'll scroll to the bottom of our list. If you're just beginning, then you won't have to do that. And you'll open up the file. And now we can make our script. As I mentioned before, it's quite simple. All you need to do is figure out what the game does when a certain monster, the boss, dies. We'll refer to our handy dandy prefab list, which I recommend everybody has if you're interested in this kind of thing. Usually they have like a death animation, but in this case there's a death sound effects we can use, and that's fine, we'll just go with that. So here we are with our blank prefab file, and we'll start it by just pasting the raw prefab that we're messing with. In this case we're reacting to the Elder dying, and we're going to spawn two Dragon's Tears. So let's just explain what we're doing, right? Now we'll take our prefab here, we're just going to copy it and clear this area, and go down and do typical formatting, which is prefab, colon, and then the name. It's usually a bit better to have some space here for your eyes. And now we need to declare the type, which is going to be on create. There's a couple different types, and it determines like when the thing happens. We could also do type destroy. These happen when this is made. So if you say it's a troll, then this is going to happen when the troll prefab gets created, right? So what we want to do is spawn something. So that's spawns, and then I think it's just dragon tier. I don't actually remember though. So we're going to go in the game, open the console, and spawn dragon tier. And boom, look at that. It is dragon tier, and then I think the player needs two of them, right? So let's double check, yes, to make the artisan table, the player needs two dragon tiers. So we can simplify this by just making it spawn two of them that way. There's actually a whole thing called data, but I want to keep this script as simple as possible for you. So instead of making two dragon tiers spawn, we're going to make one spawn twice. You usually have to save the file locally and then confirm that you want to update it your server may lag for like 10 to 20 seconds, and then the update will be applied. And this is live development, my friends. You're about to see why developing with Expand World Prefabs is honestly one of the best ways to actually practice game design. This world is open up to you in a way that before never really was possible. And I I'm trying to show that to people because for me, it's been so fulfilling. 
really fun being able to just change things on the fly. But instead of just talking about it, let's actually show you what I mean. Because we made it so that two dragon tears should show up when we kill the elder. I mean, I, I know that sounds gimmicky, but let's let's do it. Let's see. So here he is. The elder has uh, reached his feet and... All right. Then he's gone. And <laughs> wow, look at that. It Simple. You see it. There's dragon's tear right there. If we pick it up, what do we have? We have three because I spawned one earlier. It really is that simple. You can do this for any boss, any monster in the game. Just for some food for thought, let's say that instead of just having the Elder drop it, you wanted to make it so a normal monster has a small chance to drop it. But you're not just limited to bosses. We can also make it so anything else makes a drop. So let's imagine that we want a Grey Dwarf to have a small chance to drop a Dragon Tear. First, we'll refer to our handy dandy prefabs list and we'll search for Grey Dwarf. And what we're looking for is something that happens when the Grey Dwarf dies. So the sound effect would work. You can also keep going and you'll probably find, yeah, a visual effect like this. Not everything has its own prefab for its death, but this way you'll more or less be able to find something. This is the one for the Grey Dwarf Brutes, for example. But for now, we're just going to make another entry, except this time it's going to add small chance for Dragon Tear from Grey Dwarf. And your definition of small chance really depends on what you're doing. So I'm just going to make something up. We can just copy paste what we made earlier and take this Grey Dwarf thing and replace the dragon trigger with this one. So now two dragon tears will spawn every time a Grey Dwarf dies. But let's see, is that really true? We should be able to spawn a Grey Dwarf and then should be able to get him. And look at that, two dragon tears right there. Now we have five. Ooh. But obviously this is absurd. You do there's no reason to give people two dragon tears every time they kill a single gray dwarf. So in practice, we'll add another parameter called a weight. You have to make them lower than you expect. In actual gameplay, it's better to have lower drop rates. Trust me, it's gonna be more immersive if things happen occasionally compared to often. So for testing, frequent is good. But for gameplay, infrequent is better. Everything's loaded up. And there we go. We got our dragon's tears. <laughs> Showing all the loot this way definitely looks quite excessive, to be honest. And that's it. That's all you would need to do to set this kind of thing up. Now you know that you can look at the list of prefabs to find any prefab that you want, react to it by spawning something else. And this mechanism is very simple. Each adjustment is just these four lines and maybe some spaces and description. And that drastically influences the progression of all vanilla players on your server. If you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server and you can set up Expand World Prefabs and customize it to be an experience that you would enjoy. Or you could also just check out Path of Magic. But don't get me wrong, I understand that most people are not interested in having a altered or a modified Valheim experience. I'm not trying to say that the experience on Palm is better or anything. A good way to think of it is this is like my favorite version of Valheim. I didn't try and make it more gimmicky, I took the Valheim I loved and I started working with the players and listening to them and asking them questions and then involving them and my own ideas and that evolved into this experience. So if you're interested in trying that out then all you have to do is check out the post on my YouTube channel. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. If you want to support all of the other Valheim YouTubers as well, then like this video and any other video about Valheim that helps show the algorithm and whatnot that these videos are worth watching, so you'll get more of them. Bye bye